welcome back to the Coffee Yarn and Dinosaurs podcast. It has been about two months since the last episode, and I figured it is high time for me to come on over here and show you what I've been working on and catch up with you. It is a cold but very sunny day here in central Pennsylvania, where I live. I am an independent knitting and crochet designer. Basically, that just means that I publish my own patterns. Um, I'm not hired by any company. If you want to know more about independent knitwear design or crochet design, Barbara Benson just put out a great video about that. She is Watch Barbara Knit. She is also a YouTuber, and I liked that video that explained what is an indie designer. <sighs> so, this is the Coffee Yarn and Dinosaurs podcast. The coffee is because I am always drinking coffee. <laughs> always playing with the yarn, and the dinosaurs is because my house is full of small children, just three of them, but it feels full, and there's dinosaurs and toys and stomping and shouting and little kid things. <laughs> Currently, right now, they are working on schoolwork independently, so I figured I would <laughs> start talking to you about projects. This may get interrupted. This will more than likely be a multi-shot episode because somebody's going to come in here and need something and that's just where we're at. <laughs> so, um, I am wearing my Arkenstone pullover. This is a sweater that I designed. This is actually my first published sweater pattern. And just to show you, there's cables or oop, there's fuzzies. <laughs> it is a drop shoulder boat neck sweater. So basically what that means, the drop shoulder just means that it is dropped. It is not um, tailored up to fit the exact curve of the underarm to the shoulder. So it gives a comfortable sort of drapey feel. And boat neck is just the width of the neck. So, um, yep, Arkenstone. This is not what I would style it with to go out of the house. But like I said, it's cold here today and my goal is warmth and comfort and not so much to be the most fashionable person in the whole entire world while I'm at home doing school and laundry and taking care of kids. <laughs> so I have worked on quite a few projects since I saw you last. And if you'll recall, if you watched the last episode, I was working on this. This is a pattern called The Shape of Me by Talitha Kuomi. And it is not actually intended to be a skirt. It is intended to be a really big sort of like fringed ruana. And it's a really, really cool pattern and a really, really cool project. Um, I just needed to get some projects done. I was feeling overwhelmed by the amount of projects that I had and I just needed to like be done. So I'm going to stand up and put it on and I'm going to show you how this skirt came out because I'm really, really excited about it. I'm going to stand over here and sort of like hope that you can see me. Okay, so obviously I'm wearing jeans right now, but check this out. I am old enough that I wear my skirt waistband up here. <laughs> um, so... On me, it comes to about knee length. Um, I added a crochet waistband, and you can see sort of the side seam down here because it was knit flat and I did seam it together. So you have the crochet waistband up here, and overall, it's just super duper comfy. Like, this is something that. <laughs> I would wear over leggings um, or like I wear it around the house. I actually do wear it because it's warm. It's almost like wearing a blanket a little bit. <laughs> um, so I decided since I really, really enjoyed the concept of like a faded garter stitch skirt, I decided that I was going to take some mini skeins that I had and <laughs> make another one. This one um, I did a two by two, oops, see, I haven't put the elastic in yet, a two by two ribbed waistband. And I put, I continued that two by two ribbing down the side. 
And this is a whole bunch of Dragon Horde yarn mini skeins. And this top one is her, I want to say Spirit of Fire or Fire Spirit or something like that colorway. So I'm going to put this on for you too so you can see the difference. So this one sits like this. Okay. And this one is going to have elastic in it to sort of cinch the waist in. And yes, I know there's a zillion tails here. I have not woven in all of my ends from the mini skates. But this one fits like this. And I do have to hold it up. And look, <laughs> look what I did. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so things that I would change about this for next time. I like the ribbed detailing down the side. Um, with garter stitch though, it kind of makes the fabric bubble a little bit. So I would do something different here. And I actually like the crochet waistband better on the first skirt. So I don't know if I do another one, I don't know that I will keep the knitted waistband or if I do, I might make it significantly smaller than it is right now. So look, it's nice, like I like, I like this. I really like the rib panel down the side. I like how the colors blend. I'm gonna come over and show you the color blending. Um, so you can see the colors fade really nicely but I especially like how the colors fade in the ribbing. I think it's really, really nice how the color transitions in the ribbed part. So if I make this again, which I am planning to, <laughs> because you know, knitted skirts, obviously. Um, if slash when I make it again, um, I might do either stock and net instead of garter on this part or I might just do ribbing on the whole thing I'm not really sure um but if I do ribbing on the whole thing that will also mean that I need less yarn because ribbing is meant to be stretchy right like you don't want a piece of ribbed fabric <laughs> that's the exact circumference of you like you want it to stretch you want tons of negative ease so that would also be a faster knit. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we shall see. But for now, I have this. It's good information. Um, I have to stick some elastic in it so I can wear it. But this is just a ribbed slash garter stitch skirt made out of mini skeins. Um, the other thing I discovered, which was really, really helpful, is that I like the faded portion better than I like the just transition um, like from one color to another. So if you look up here, this is a sort of really subtle transition, right? Like you almost can't see the colors change here. But then as you get further down to the bottom, it becomes a much more obvious change. And that sort of like line in the garter stitch I am less fond of, even though the colors are beautiful. So I sort of feel like I did the yarn a disservice um, in these colors at the bottom because I just don't think it transitioned as nicely. You can hear the thumping in the background. That is my obnoxious boiler in my old house because it does that. And a train in the back. All the noises at once. Let's just get all the noises at once out of the way. Thank you. I'm gonna go reheat my coffee and I'll come back when the noises stop. Okay, I think we're good on house noises and my hot coffee is hot again. <clears throat> so, um, other projects that I finished can't remember if I showed you guys, but I'm going to show you again just in case. I finished my beekeeper's quilt. And by finished, <laughs> what I mean is that I sewed up all of the hexapuffs that I currently made. 
And I think I am just going to call this finish because I started this years ago. I started this um, while I was pregnant with my eldest son and he is seven and a half right now. <laughs> um, and I started it because I thought it would be a really great like tummy time, like texture play mat and with all the colors and with all the like the embroidered puffs and stuff like that. But obviously I did not get it joined up until now. Um, my youngest is three. <laughs> uh, and there will be no more babies. We are done with that. So I'm going to leave it like this. Currently, my three-year-old does actually kind of use it as a blanket, which I find fascinating because she is still tiny enough that this works as a blanket for her. Um, but I'm going to stand up with it over here. And you can see, this is not... <laughs> This is not like blanket sized on a grown adult. I am five foot five, okay? So I'm, for an American, I'm pretty mid-sized, okay? I'm five foot five. Um, you know, I'm not super tall, I'm not super short, and <laughs> this is how it works for me. Um, this is more like, I could sit with it on my lap, but it doesn't cover my feet. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you would call this. Almost like a stroller blanket, but it's heavy because the hexapuffs are filled. Um, so, I really, really like the pattern. I really, really like how it came out. I don't know that I will ever make more. Um, much to the sadness of my family <laughs> because as soon as I got it all sewed up they were like uh, you can make this bigger right or like you can make one for me right and I said to my kids you know like I started this before he was born this is <laughs> do you know how long <laughs> like obviously it doesn't take seven years to make this blanket but um, I want to say that each one of these hexapuffs probably takes like two hours and I'm a fairly speedy knitter um because you're basically like increasing half a sock toe and then decreasing and I did it on size two needles us2 with fingering weight yarn so which is like what you're supposed to do in the pattern I think the pattern might have used threes um but it's a very cool idea and I really 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 like it I just have trouble sticking with a project that needs this much dedication for this long, obviously. So, um, the way I opted to join them, and you might find this interesting. Oops, there's a little end there that I did not tuck in. The way I opted to join them is I just sewed them together at the corners. So you can see my fingers can still come through, right? And there's still sort of flexibility to it because I have those gaps. The original pattern calls for quilt ties at every single one of these corners where I decided to sew it. And I just know for a fact that if I put little ties at each corner, my kids will futz with them. They'll fiddle with them. Um, and I said futz. It's a Pennsylvania Dutch word. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Um, yes. So I know that my kid would, would futz with them if they were tied so I opted to just sort of sew but I have seen people who sew all the way across and it makes this very stiff fabric because it's joined so solidly so I do have a video I will try to put a link to it I do have a video it's definitely on Instagram it's possibly also here on YouTube I have to check and I will link to it so I, you can see me like live sewing up and explaining how I do it. It's really quick. It's just like a 30 second video of like, here you go. This is me joining up my beekeeper's quilt. So enough of that. <laughs> beekeeper's quilt over there. Um, and that's what happens to it. It just kind of gets tossed around and the kids like use it as a pillow or they lay on top of it. Um, it's actually really good for that. If the kids are going to like sit on the ground and play they'll sit on top of it, kind of like a rug, which like, that's a super time consuming rug to make. <laughs> but, um, you know, it is what it is. Oh, oh, not done with the beekeeper's quilt. 
because one of the reasons why um, it's recommended that you do the quilt ties and therefore that I only sewed the corners is so that if one of the puffs gets like worn through or it gets something spilled on it, like coffee, <laughs> um, that you can just launder the individual puff instead of having to like unpick an entire seam. So say if this one got worn through, I could just snip, 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 snip. Granted that would unravel here, but it's not as big a deal as having to pick out entire seam. Um, theoretically, that also means that puffs could be replaced. Like if they got worn through super, super badly, you could just replace one of the puffs. Chuck over there. Um, I, <laughs> I also finished, let's see what else did I finish for projects. Um, I finished twin sweaters that I cannot show you because they are in the mail. Um, my friends who are my, they used to be my next door neighbors when I lived in Philly and we moved and then they moved, um, had twin boys in December. So anyway, <laughs> um, my previous next door neighbors who were really good friends and literally the only part I miss about living in Philly is that I do not get to just like run out my backyard and be friends with them. Um, they just had twin boys. And I'm going to insert some photos of the sweaters that I made. I made a fraternal set of confetti sweaters by Nomad Stitches. And they're called, yeah, it's Confetti DK. So I assume that means that she has multiple weights like fingering or worsted or DK or whatever. I assume. I don't know. I have not looked that closely. But it was a really quick and a really fun pattern. Um, I cannot vouch for the fit yet because as I said, they, <laughs> the sweaters are on the way to the moms and the babies and they will get there when they get there. And then maybe they will tell me how the sweaters fit. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Knowing them, I will probably get, you know, instant dress up pictures as soon as the sweaters get there because they're very knit and crochet worthy people. Um, so I used... Lion Brand Mandala for the body of the sweater in the Sphinx colorway. And the only color manipulation that I did was to make sure that the sleeves started with a color that contrasted with the body and started at the beginning of a color. Because I didn't want the sleeve to like change colors halfway through. I wanted it to just be like one solid contrasting sleeve. Um <laughs> contrast in collar and cuffs and let's see what was that that was lion brand pound of love and I'm very happy with that and I'm very surprised because when I was knitting the baby blanket for my eldest son seven and a half years ago I used lion brand pound of love and that blanket is so daggone scratchy that you, like I don't even want it up next to me let alone for a baby. And so I have never used that yarn again until now. And I actually found it in the store and I touched it and I was like, man, they must have redone the formula on this yarn or maybe I just found a soft skein of it. I don't know. So for me, um, I think I'm going to have to like touch, <laughs> touch that yarn, the pound of love before I trust that it's soft enough to buy sight unseen, but it's soft enough that now I would actually make baby blankets with it. And obviously I put it on the collar and cuffs for baby garments. So hopefully that means that they revamped the formula and pound of love is actually soft now, or maybe I just got a bad scratchy batch of it before. I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. Um, but those are off. They're in the mail. <laughs> the next thing I have to show you is a little bit funny because um, I have been wearing these. <laughs> I have been wearing these nonstop since I made them. And they are socks. Um, and so they're like the soles are a little bit ratty because they're, I think they're non-superwash. Um, so these are... 
Ooh, and they're fuzzy. See, you know, guys, just real life talk. This is what hand knits look like when you wear them, right? You see all the pretty pictures on Instagram, but when you wear hand knit things, they do not stay in pristine condition. Like, yes, you take really good care of them as best you can, but sometimes the soles of your socks look like this. <laughs> and that's just how things are. Um, so I'm going to roll these sleeves up so I can stick my hands in my socks and show you what they are. This is a new pattern from me that is currently in testing. So, do 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 do, do 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 do. So this is a DK weight top-down sock. It has a heel flap and gusset, and it has a square heel turn. Now, these are an interesting sock pattern because the way that the cable runs, it doesn't take up the whole front of the sock, right? It kind of just sits nicely and I'm gonna insert a glamour shot of it so you can see it looking all pretty. Um, but these socks can be knit in fingering weight or DK weight. This, oh, I should, should tell you what yarn I used. Um, this is the Farmer's Daughter, I hope I'm saying it right, Pishkun. DK, and that is 100% American Rambouillet. And I have to get more details on the like shearing and spinning process. Um, but Farmer's Daughter Fibers does a lot of work like supporting indigenous peoples and native rights and things like that. Um, I believe that this is wool that is like harvested and then, or sheared and then sent to a mill to be spun, but I'm not positive. So like, that was just the impression I got from speaking to the yarn owner when I bought this two years ago. <laughs> so like, don't quote me on that. I'm gonna go research. We'll see what happens. Hi friends, it's Future Ruth. Um, I did some double checking. The yarn is in fact American Rambouillet. It is raised in Montana and Wyoming and then processed. And I got that information from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers website. Hope that helps. So yes, this is DK weight. This is 100% Rambouillet. So there is no nylon. There's no bamboo. There's no whatever in here that you would normally see in a sock yarn. Um, but it's holding up really, really well. And actually, something that I think is really, really cool, even though it's fuzzy, I'm gonna show you my fuzzy sock soles. The sole of the sock is actually sort of felting together a little bit, which is awesome. <laughs> so look at this. Look at here on the sole, because there is no nylon, like everybody says you don't wanna have a sock yarn that's no nylon, but look at that. And you see how the stitches are like felting together a little bit, like they're fulling together. That's where the ball of my foot hits. Look at that. So on a sock with nylon in it, this is where they wear through first for me. They always wear through on the ball of the foot. I don't know why, that must just be how I walk or something like that. But with this yarn, um, it's not. <laughs> I'm kind of really excited about that because if this is going to create sort of its own little felted like patch where I normally have socks wearing through that would be amazing um and even on the heel you can see a little bit of stretch because I've been wearing them but it's it's still like super it's not looking like it's going to wear through, which I'm very excited about. Um, yes, I wear my socks without shoes. I tend to wear them just walking around the house. Sometimes I will wear um, like clog slippers or Crocs because I'm super fancy like that, obviously. <laughs> um, and because Crocs and socks just work out very nicely. And I'm past the point of caring whether it's fashionable. 
uh, it's comfy. So yes, these are super duper awesome. They are in testing right now. They are called Malthanae. And um, yeah, they just went up for testing. The testing call is still open. So if you feel like it and you're possibly interested in testing these, um, head over to yarnpond.com. And that is where I run all of my tests. So yes, Malthanae socks. And yes, oh, so here's something interesting. Um, sock patterns are very good for modifying, right? You'll find that a lot of experienced sock knitters do not necessarily want to knit the pattern exactly as written out, usually because they prefer a different heel or they prefer a different toe or they've found they wanna knit the cuff differently because that's just what happens when you gain experience knitting. You find that, um, like I, I had someone who tested this sweater who usually wears very fitted sweaters. And she said, oh, I've never knit a drop shoulder. I would like to test your pattern and I'll knit a drop shoulder. And she did. And she was like, you know, this fits exactly as you intended it, but it's not my preferred style. And I was like, great. Like that's, that's good feedback for me. And that's good feedback for her because now she knows that if she sees a drop shoulder sweater, that is not how she wants her hand knit sweaters to fit. And the only way you can know that is by making that style of sweater or by making that style of socks or whatever. You make it, you find out whether you like it, and then you base your next project choices off of that. Um, so on the mouth and eye socks, my little dude, my middle son, I have two boys and a girl, so my middle child um, found in my yarn stash this beautifulness and I will put the information on the screen because I can't remember what it is right now um but I basically took the mouth and a sock pattern and I cast him on the appropriate size for his little foot um and I'm just doing a top down stockinette sock he is five Yes, the leg is incredibly long. This goes almost up to his knee um, because that's what he asked for. <laughs> um, so you can see it has this really cool like spiraling rainbow effect. And because of the spiraling rainbow effect, I debated whether or not I wanted to do an afterthought heel or what I wanted to do, but I decided to stick with the pattern. Here, let me pull this through. I am magic looping, obviously. I decided to stick with the pattern and do my little heel flap, my square heel turn. I can bring that closer. We'll see if it focuses. My square heel turn and guess it. So a square heel turn um, obviously is square and it's one of the ones that I prefer because I find that it draws the sides of the heel flap a little bit down underneath the heel. Because our heels, normally you see heel flaps that are shaped like a V, or not flaps, heel turns, right? You knit the flap down and then you turn. The turn is oftentimes shaped like a V. I do not know about you, but my foot is not shaped like a V. <laughs> my foot, my heel, is round. So the square heel turn pulls some of the heel flap underneath and has that straight line so it pulls it around your heel a little bit instead of making that V. So I just happen to like a square heel turn better. Um, it is longer underneath the heel the normal heel turn, but it also has a slightly shallower gusset, depending on how long you make the heel flap. So, but yes, this is just my example of, you can take this pattern, this is DK weight, it fits me. This is literally the same stitch count on fingering weight and it fits my five-year-old. Ta-da! You can do it. <laughs> so I am working on these. Um, I am working on a something else that I can't show you yet until September. There's something coming in September. Um, 
because this is how far advanced <laughs> if you are not self-publishing. That's the only thing I can tell you is I have a pattern coming that is not going to be self-published and it will be in September. Um, but I can't show you and I have to work really far ahead. <laughs> so something else I am working on is I am using this gorgeous, gorgeous Jillian Kittles yarn and I'll show you. We'll get up closer for that. Look at this. This is conifer on fancy sock from Jillian Kittles. And so um, Jill and I are doing a pattern collaboration. And what that means is that she sends me yarn and I design a thing and then we're like, ta-da! So I am designing a thing with this yarn, but this is the first sample. The second sample, whoa, wow. check this out. This color is amazing. This is Oktoberfest, again on her fancy sock base, same sock base. I just love this color. And it pairs with Guten Tag, which anyone who speaks German is gonna laugh at my pronunciation and that's fine. <laughs> Not German. Um, there you go. So this is just this lovely peach and I'm really happy the colors are coming out perfectly in this camera. It's just this lovely peach and it's going to pair with this like slightly darker gold and peach and red. This one, um, Oktoberfest reminds me of the color of apples, like apples in spring, like honey crisp. And when you sort of have that yellow and gold and oh, it's so nice. So these are gonna be the two color version of the pattern I am working on for this. One color version. <sighs> so you can't see that yet because I haven't actually started making it. <laughs> because my design process, because sometimes people ask me, do you, do you make the pattern first? Do you make the project first? How does it work for design? Um, I know designers who do both. I know designers who make the entire garment or project or whatever, and then they write the pattern for it. I am the exact opposite. I can and do, I can and do literally write an entire pattern before I have done anything more than a swatch. So I made a swatch with this yarn and then based off the information I got from my gauge swatch, I have literally designed an entire pattern for this yarn um, <laughs> in 15 sizes because apparently I like to be extra like that. So it's coming, it has happened. I just have not yet made a single stitch of the project. Okay, so yes. Uh, and with that, my kids are up and moving about now. So I think we're just gonna call this good for now. I do have other projects that I would love to show you. Um, there's socks that I can't find. There's socks that are on my husband's feet. So yeah, thank you for joining me for this little coffee and yarn and projects chat. Coffee, yarn, and dinosaurs, you might even say. Um, if you like what you see, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That'll just let you know when I put out new videos and it'll help let the YouTube algorithm know that people want to see my video. <laughs> Behold YouTubing while there are children in the house. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.